I recently reformed and heat treated the tip of an old screwdriver. A couple viewers commented that they would like to learn more about heat treating steel. This video is not intended to be a deep dive into metallurgy. I'm not going to talk about time temperature transformation diagrams. And I'm not going to mention austenite, martensite, or perlite. My aim is to demonstrate basic heat treating anyone can do with minimal equipment while still achieving decent results. The easiest steel to heat treat is plain carbon steel with a carbon content above 0.4%. For this video, I'm using 1065 carbon steel music wire. The 10 means it's plain carbon steel, made up of mostly iron and a little bit of carbon. The 65 is the carbon content, in this case, 0.65%. 1065 is considered a high carbon steel. 1040 would be medium carbon, and 1018 would be low carbon. If the first two digits are something other than 10, then it is considered an alloy steel with significant amounts of elements other than iron and carbon. An example would be 4140 alloy steel. 4140 is a medium carbon alloy steel containing chromium and molybdenum. It is often referred to as chromoly steel. If you're buying steel for a knife or a tool project, I would recommend using one with at least 0.65% carbon. I've had good success with 1075 steel for my knife and scraper projects. In order to demonstrate how heat treating affects the properties of high carbon steel, I cut four roughly equal lengths of the music wire. I heated them up until a magnet wouldn't stick anymore, and then I let them cool in air. In doing this, I am simulating the process called annealing. Real annealing involves using a furnace with precise temperature control. The part is heated to its critical temperature and then slowly cooled over time. For those of us with just a propane torch and a dream, heating the steel until a magnet won't stick and then cooling down to room temperature and air is close enough. After the pieces had cooled, I filed a notch in the center. The annealed steel was soft and easy to file. I tried my best to make the notches the same in each piece. I reheated three of the pieces back up to critical temperature. Again, the real way to do this is using a furnace with precise temperature control. Experienced metal workers can tell the critical temperature by the shade of the red-orange color. Lucky for amateurs like me, the Curie temperature, the temperature at which steel stops attracting a magnet, is really close to the critical temperature. I continued to heat the pieces for a little while longer to compensate for the cooling that would occur while I fumbled around with the pliers. I dunked the pieces into canola oil to quickly cool them. This is called quenching. Here's the three pieces after quenching. Now when I run a file over them, it just skates on the surface and won't bite into the metal. The quenched steel is harder than the file. I brighten the metal on two of the quenched pieces. Tempering involves reheating the quenched part up to a specific temperature much lower than the critical temperature. You can temper steel by color rather than measuring the temperature. That's why I took a minute to brighten the pieces so I could better see the color change as I reheated them. Once I saw the color I was after, I quickly dunked the piece in water. This wasn't requenching, just me stopping the color change where I wanted it. Those white bricks are kiln fire bricks. They are left over from my mini forge project. So here's the two tempered pieces. This one is a gold or straw color. I got it a little too hot right here.
and this one I heated up more to a blue temper. Here's all four pieces. Each has been heat treated differently. Two properties that can be controlled by heat treating are hardness and toughness. For a knife or a tool, you want a hard material that will stay sharp and resist wear. But toughness, or the ability to survive impact, is also important. I'm going to show the relationship between hardness and toughness by performing my own crude version of an IZOD impact test. The IZOD test machine consists of a pendulum with a weight at the end striking a notched sample. How far the pendulum swings through the sample is recorded on the scale. Okay, here goes. First up is the piece I heated up and let cool naturally in air, simulating annealing. It bent before it finally broke at the notch. This is the piece I quenched. It broke like a piece of glass. This is the piece I quenched and tempered to a straw color. It took a lot more impact before breaking. This last piece was quenched and tempered to a blue color. Again, it took a lot of impact before breaking at the notch. Okay, let's all pause for a moment of silence for the top half of the blue-tempered piece. It flew across my shop and is lost forever. The annealed sample was soft and easy to file, and it bent before it broke at the notch. This heat treatment would be ideal for filing, drilling, and sanding but wouldn't hold a sharp edge as a knife and would be prone to bending and deforming as a tool. The quenched piece was super hard, but as fragile as glass. It would be prone to chipping and fracturing as a knife or a tool. It has no toughness. The straw-tempered piece is almost as hard as the quenched piece, so it will hold an edge well. The tempering process made it resistant to impact, increasing its toughness. This is an ideal knife temper. The blue temper trades some more hardness for increased toughness. It would be a good temper for springs or a flexible putty knife or a saw blade. I hope I've shown what makes high carbon plain steel such a great material for knives and tools. It can be annealed for easy cutting, filing, and drilling, and then quenched and tempered into a knife or tool that holds an edge while also being tough and resistant to impact. And all of this can be done in a home shop without fancy equipment. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I've also had success making knives out of old files. If you have an old file or saw blade that you want to use for a project, First, quench a test piece. If you can get it harder than a file by quenching, then you can temper it to hold an edge and be tough.